Uh, permafrost has everything to do with living, working, building in the subarctic and the Arctic. On the top of the world, below the surface of a giant ice cap, a city is buried. Today on the island of Greenland, as part of man's continuing efforts to master the secrets of survival in the Arctic, the United States Army has established an unprecedented nuclear-powered Arctic Research Center. Camp Century is buried below the surface of this ice cap. The permafrost tunnel was actually dug in 1963 and 1964, not as in a, an idea to start to just to research permafrost. It was actually dug as part of a Cold War experiment to test whether or not permafrost was a good medium to protect uh, men and materiel from nuclear attack. Uh, permafrost in an engineering sense is relatively plastic, which means it's very stable, so that it's a good place that could act as a bunker to protect uh, weapons or people. They never tested the concept, like they never actually put any uh, weapons or, or anything else here, or they never actually attacked it to determine whether or not the, the tunnel was stable. However, it certainly was, uh, the concept was very successful in the sense that we've had a number of large earthquakes here uh, since 1964, and the tunnel has made it through them all uh, uh, quite well. They actually did demonstrate the original concept that the permafrost would be a good medium to protect military weapons. In general, there's significant risk to military uh, infrastructure, although it all depends. Permafrost is very variable. In one place, it might be thaw stable. On the other hand, then just on the fringes of the cantonment area, where you have a lot of uh, uh, housing developments, there's a lot of really ice-rich permafrost, and those houses have to be built to two or three times the cost of normal military housing because knowing about the permafrost. In a larger sense around the, uh, Alaska, especially all the, the dew line sites, the remote sites that the Air Force has all the way across the state, those are all impacted by, by permafrost. And so on an annual basis, they have to go in and repair the runways just to be able to get people in, the, in and out of there uh, to support the infrastructure there. The main research that occurred here, uh, especially early on in the early 60s, had to do with permafrost engineering. The, you know, there were questions that we didn't know. How does permafrost react to building foundations? How does permafrost react to um, roads? There was a whole lot of warming and, and freezing experiments that they had done, all trying to get at what are the engineering properties of permafrost. The science either helps you refreeze it or it helps you thaw it. Because where you have thaw-stable permafrost, with, which means there's a lot of gravels associated with it, a lower ice content, when you, when you thaw out that permafrost, then it'll stay stable forever because it's not going to refreeze as permafrost, not under the current uh, uh, climate regime that we have now. And of course, other technology uh, like thermosiphons actually help refreeze the ground. It's not our place to stop it because that's something way bigger than anything that we can do. Um, our goal is to adapt to it. It, you know, really it's more about adapting, I think, than it is to try to hold back the change, because I don't think we can.